Okay, so so I was listening to someone speak the other day, and they're talking about uh, they're using Jay Z's brunch for example, and Jay Z has this brunch for Rockefeller each year, and he invites like DJ Khaled, he invites Meek Mill, he invites all these artists, and it's a place where very few people can go or attend, but they call paparazzi there, and it looks like this lavish event of highly successful people. Avengers Assemble. Avengers, <laughs> Avengers Assemble. Well, actors also have a similar thing when they have actors parties and cast parties and things like that. There's an inner circle of people there. What I've noticed with this industry is that a lot of people uh, feel like if they're in the room with somebody, they can talk to them about any subject. If like they're in the room with somebody, that's enough for them to pitch their opportunity, pitch their ideas, and things like that. Um, and it's interesting because it takes, a, it takes a great deal of social awareness. So, today, so today's topic or the topic of the moment is I want to talk about social awareness. When you're in a room, when is the right time to approach somebody with your own ambitions, your own desires, your own strategies, your own plans for enhancing and moving the needle of your own life? This is for any networking event. When you, always, when you go to a networking event, whether that be for your own business, whether it be in the entertainment industry, whether that is to meet new people, the best way to start off any conversation is to keep the attention on them and you casually bring up yourself as the conversation goes on. Mm. Say if I never met you before, right? Mm. I walk up to you. You taught me this. Hey, man, I'm Josh. Oh, I'm Chad. Nice to meet you. You say you're an actor. I'm an actor, too. Yeah. And I ask you, hey, what's, what's, your, what's your favorite project that you've been a part of? Right. You know, that's probably the best question that you've ever, like, yeah, told me. Uh -huh. And you start talking, yada, yada, yada. And you naturally just start talking about yourself. It's not even a conscious thing. You just subconsciously start doing it. Right. And then you constantly, then you constantly, like, oh, I'm being rude. Like, okay, so what about you? You know? And then you start talking about yourself. And you start talking about your opportunity on what you got going on. Mm. And... People never really remember what you say, but they remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And it's all about, if I get you to talk more, you're going to feel like that I'm more invested in you than, I, than I'm trying to get something from you. Right. So when I bring up something, mm -hmm. when I bring up something that I'm working on, like, hey, you know, I have this project that I'm working on. And like, say if I want to approach Jay-Z, right? right? Keep the conversation on Jay-Z. We talk, if he even wants to talk to me, right? But say if I ha say in this hypothetical scenario, he does want to talk to me. Right. You know, he is gracious enough to give me some of his time to talk to me. Right. I would ask him like, hey, man, you know, I got this project, yada, yada, yada. Or, like, do you have any advice on how I could get this made or anything? Like, do you have any wisdom that you can pass on? Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I have asked that question in networking events and people have told me, oh, I can link you up with someone. I can yeah. help you out. I can yeah. give you, uh, give me your business card, or let me give, give, let me get you, give me let me give you my number, and you can email me, or let me give you my email so you can email me, email me all this again so you can remind me because they know they're gonna forget. Right. And like, oh yeah, I remember that. Let me link you up with so and so, you know. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the best way when you're in any networking situation is when you approach, even if you don't know anybody, when you approach them, you keep the conversation on them and you casually bring yourself up instead of shoving your business card in their face, trying to say, I need this from you, yada, 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 yeah. looking desperate and hungry. And I've seen that a lot. Yeah, I, I kind of agree more. And you know, there's, not, there's, nothing, there's nothing more humbling than asking questions. Um, there are some people who go to places already intending on promoting themselves and things like that. That's okay, your intentions, um, are for you and for you only, but there are some social cues you should follow, like you know, being humble, asking questions. When it comes to running into another actor, um, you know, uh, Josh and I have talked about it. The kind of questions you want to ask are, you know, what was your favorite project, or what was the most challenging project for you, and for what you know, what reason? You want to stay away from things that could sound like um, it's about you. Or, or it's really, you know, like I know people say, oh, what have you been in? Or what do I know you from? Well, if you, well, if you, under, if you understand that question, you're saying, what do I know you from? Like basically I'm trying to gauge how much value or time I should be giving you. Mm -hmm. And so even if they've been in major projects, that's still a distasteful conversation. Uh, so you just got you to you realize how you want to, you know, you got to realize the questions you're asking and why you're truly asking them. When I ask you what's your favorite project to be in that you have been in, 
and what's your biggest challenge, that person has to reflect on themselves and let them discover it for themselves as well. So um, the right questions <clears throat> really matter. Now, <clears throat> the reason I use this, um, this brunch scenario that Jay-Z has, there's also another, I'm using Jay-Z quite a bit for this one, which he's not an actor, <laughs> but he's a, obviously he's a, he's a rap mogul, uh, a billionaire, and he produces a lot of shows and movies despite that. Yes, sir. Um, the Heart of They Fall um, by Spike Lee, one of the major producers was Sean Carter, which is Jay-Z. <clears throat> but I'm using him as an example because there's this meme that was going around that says, that was saying, uh, would you rather take 15, would, would you rather take 50,000 or uh, have, have, have dinner with Jay-Z? Would you rather take $50,000 or have dinner with Jay-Z? Dinner with Jay-Z? Uh, well... <laughs> All right, everyone, everyone's hearing this. Y'all can, can laugh. Y'all can laugh and, you know, uh, after hearing our response to that. But everyone said, we take the 50000 take we take a dinner with Jay-Z. And there's a funny meme going around, and everyone's like, Jay-Z will tell you I'll take the 50000 Jay-Z took it. And, and so the, fl the, the flip side of it is this. He was at an award show for the Grammys not too long ago, and there's some guy talking to him, some guy to let them talking to him, and Jay-Z's just looking forward the whole time. Jay-Z's completely ignoring the guy to the left of him. And I said, this is, what, this is what would have happened if you took that dinner with Jay-Z. <laughs> and it's funny because people need to understand that. They think, they think just because they're in the room with um, Will Smith, just because Will Smith's a really personable guy, they think just because they're in the room with Spielberg, just because they're in the room with James Cameron, just because they're in the room with these people, they think they're on the same level. And that's just not the truth. <clears throat> and it's not that you, and you both are human, you got that part right. But the part that, di that differs, these little social circles and these cliques are, these are people who have went through certain obstacles that they all have in common. They all, they, they all have been, uh, you know, attacked by the press, uh, attacked, you know, since a public perception. They all had to go through the same thing to create these records or the same thing to create that film. They had to earn their way that, from, to where they had to literally climb from the bottom. Yeah, exactly. You know, if I made a short film, I cannot relate to... Steven Spielberg on what's it like to make a blockbuster movie because he actually had to go through that. Um, James Cameron had to go around and try to pitch this this, this movie about a, a, a boat, a, a tragedy, um, you know, called the Titanic. He had to go around and pitch that. And it was hard for him to get 200 million. That's why it's divided between 20th Century Fox and Paramount because not one studio would cover the cost. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many studios have you walked into with a script and, and, and asked for capital to shoot your feature film. I can't think of the time I've done it. Those days are over. Those days are over, but also on top of that... It was even rare back then, too. It Very was, unlikely. It was rare back then, right? Um, and so when you're in that room with them, you guys aren't on the same... You are, you're all equal in the sense of being human, but they're around their friends because they had to, they had to, they had to have a mutual sacrifice. They all mutually sacrificed and lost a lot, right? Um, in these music circles, Jay Z and Nas had to sacrifice a different amount than your local rapper did, and so your local rapper can't just go approach Jay Z and Nas, but hey man, check out this mixtape. It's like you can do that, but you're probably going to rub these people the wrong way. Oh you yeah, know, you got to have social awareness. Ethan Hawke said it best, dude. He said, why do you think actors marry and get engaged to other actors? As soon as he said that, he was like, because there's, a, there's only, like, for one, it's very hard to be around people. He, he didn't mean this disrespectfully, but he says it's very hard to be around normal people, especially when you're such a big actor. And plus, actors relate to each other. We don't do it because Hollywood tells us to. We do it because we're the only people in the world who are in this crazy industry where right. we can relate to each other. We, even if other people are in a room with us, so you know, we were very, a lot, he says, a lot of actors are, they isolate themselves, especially the bigger they are, the more isolatory they become. Yeah. So when you have someone coming to the room, trying to pitch you an opportunity, trying to take pictures with you and yada, 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 it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's a turnoff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's kind of funny that he said that guy was talking to Jay-Z and Jay-Z was just ignoring him because it's like. Jay Z, I don't think Jay Z's trying to be an asshole. You know what I mean? But it's like, what have you done to get into this room? Exactly. Like, yes, you're in this room. Yeah, congrats but on that. Not, not for your, not for your hard work and merit. Not for what I, you know, you're not on our. It's, it's messed up. But this is, this is the way life is, right? You're not on our level. 
Right. You're not, you know, you, you probably will be one day, but right now you're not on our level. Absolutely. So I don't understand why you're trying to talk to me about whatever that guy, that guy was trying to talk to him about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so for the, the most humbling way I found to phrase this, because it's hard for people to stomach this, is you're not on this level because it's not that they're on different levels because of one person's greatness. Yes. You're not, you're not on the same level because of the one person's greater sacrifice. So one of them has just sacrificed a lot more, and so for you to go to them as if you guys are on the same on the same tier is disrespectful. But that person has lost a lot; they've gained a lot, but also risked a lot more than you have. And so for you to go up to them and say, "Hey, man, I'm glad we both made it," is is as nine. It's just it, it it doesn't it doesn't make much sense, and that does happen. Yeah, that does happen. But here's the thing, though, and I might be going a little bit off topic. Jay Z did take Drake under his wing. Wait, who? Jay Z did take Drake under his wing when Drake was first starting out, like before Drake left Degrassi. You can say, can you, but I understand that Drake wasn't a no, he wasn't a nobody, but he did take him under his wing, though. What do you mean? Then yeah, Drake signed to Lil Wayne. But didn't I? But I've read I've read reviews from Drake that Jay Z really helped him with his flow and everything. Really helped him with. Like uh, get get him getting him out there. No, no, that's that, that's Wayne. The, the reason why everyone affiliated with Drake is because Wayne was the biggest artist at the time. For sure. And Wayne Wayne's co-sign to Drake was because Wayne was the hottest artist at the moment. Yeah. And when Wayne co-signed his his lieutenant, his first seat as Drake, that's when the that's when the industry Ti was on his album, uh, Jay Z was on his album, uh, Swiss Beats was on his album, everybody was on his album just because. If Wayne says yes, we say yes type of thing. It wasn't like, no, Jay- Jay-Z had nothing to do with like the inventory stages of his career. That was, that was, that was really Jay Prince connected him to, to uh, that, that, was, that was a manager connecting him to Wayne in the back of the tour. And gotcha. Uh, so, so basically, got Jay-Z doesn't, he doesn't waste time with, um, <laughs> with new talent. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, if you said Jay Cole, then that's a conversation. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he signed Jay Cole. Oh, Jay Z did. So yeah, Jay Z signed J Cole. So J Cole is Jay Z's artist. So that's a good example for sure. Uh, and and back to that is J Cole never went to the room. J Cole is the most personal people you ever meet. He guess you came to St. Louis during um, the Ferguson situation. He did. And uh, I was sitting right next to him, and it's like two a.m. And um, you know, I made a joke because like like ten of us in like a circle or whatever. And I was like, I was like cold world, and then he look, looked at me. I was like, and he's like, he's like, he's like, what's up, younger, younger or youngster, something like that. I was like, oh crap. So, I stopped. I care. That conversation ended. Uh, yeah. But it wasn't the right setting, anyways, and I was much younger then. But with that being said, J Cole is really personable, and J Cole never entered a room with Jay Z with his chest puffed out and said, "I'm the next big, I'm, I'm the hottest thing out." No, he went in there with a humbling uh, student mentor type of. Pers- pers- personality and persona that you know when he when, when him and Jay Z met, Jay Z was just glad to help this man get to the next the next tier of his career, and so yeah, that's 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 how that works. Uh, Drake is Wayne, uh, Cole is Jay Z, yeah. but they had to go in in a way that was non threatening. Thanks for the knowledge. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, it's uh, that's that's how that that's how that cookie crumbles, and then. You're gonna start seeing it for these newer artists, like with the reggaeton artists. Um, I see that underneath the same label that Bad Bunny's under, they're getting all these new artists now too. Mm-hmm. And one of them I really do like, but it's kind of what happens when when you're hot, you kind of get you get tired of it in some degree. You bring on somebody else, but make sure that the point of this conversation is make sure that person gets brought on. By if you want to be brought on, make sure that person gets brought on. Based off of you being open and humble, nobody wants you. Don't come to them acting like you're the same level as them because you're not. All right, guys, I changed my answer. I'm taking that fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a movie. <laughs> take the fifty thousand, guys. Take the fifty thousand anytime. Because <laughs> Jay would have to take that fifty thousand too, man. Like, yeah. like he would, he would himself take that fifty thousand, make a movie. It's a funny meme that goes around, and um, you know, it was some guy trying to sound like he was super like intelligent and woke and he's like then I'll take that dinner with Jay Z and everyone's like, Bro, I'm so offering you fifty thousand, I don't care who it is. Like <laughs> I'll take the fifty thousand, like, you know. Yeah. Cause even that conversation <laughs> the conversation is just gonna be sitting there like, 
You idiot. You should have took that $50,000. Uh, but here and there, guys, I think the biggest thing, this, this whole, let's go back to what this whole conversation is about. It's about social awareness and the importance of it. Um, in your own experience, what other things have you noticed about social awareness and how it serves you? Um, like I said before, just I just try to keep the conversation with other people. And I think it's all about bringing out good energy and everything. And you'll get that reciprocated. Even if that person can't help you, at least you had a great conversation with someone, carry that over to the next conversation. Mm-hmm. Or it's not even about trying to get that person to help you. Maybe you should go in and try to see how you can help that person. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's the way that I see it, at least. You, you give us gain. It's give us gain. We've had a conversation about this in the past. And then also, the, another conversation that rolls into this is the one that I spoke about when it comes to don't forge your success. You know, don't, don't buy the merch and all this other kind of stuff and then go in a room and think you guys are on the same level just because... Um, you have a director's seat that says your name and Spielberg has a director's seat that says his name but there's a, there's a vast difference between the two of you so don't, yeah. don't downplay their success um, social awareness guys will get you farther in this industry than anything I believe um, so yeah uh, utilize it um, awareness comes from listening so listen to the room and, and, you'll, and you'll know innately instinctually you'll know when it's your time to step forward with, Wow, that's that opportunity. Exactly. This is Black Hollywood.